Hello, I'm Jokan and I welcome you to Solve Man. Yes, let's tackle this question on fractions. Pay critical attention here. Now, what do we have? One over three of pupils in class two are boys. If the total number of pupils in the class is 27, find the number of boys in the class. Good, this is simple, right? Good, we are told that one over three of pupils in class two, they are all boys. So the question is seeking for the number of boys, the actual number of boys. Since we know the fraction is 1 over 3, we ask ourselves, then what is the total number of pupils in the class? And we have it in the question, which is what? 27. So we are just finding 1 over 3 of the total class, which is 1 over 3, of 27. And off in mathematics simply means what? Multiplication. So let's tackle it. Solution simply means how you solve it. So we are looking for the number of boys in the class. And we know the fraction of boys is what? It's 1 over 3. And it's of 1 over 3 of the total number of people in the class. And we have it here. It's given to us. What? We are told in the total number of people in the class is what? 27. So of 27. So what do we do? 1 over 3 times what? Off simply means multiplication, 27. 27 can also be 27 over 1. is the same thing. We put over 1 in order to make it simple for us. Good. It's equal to now you check whether you can cancel vertically, vertical or diagonally. Diagonally. Note, I believe you know that. Good. So 1 over 3 cannot cancel. When you look diagonally here, you can cancel. 3 will go into what? 27. 313, 326, 393, 412, 315, 316, 37, 21, 3, 24, 3, 9, 27. So 3 will go into what? 27, 9, and 3 will go into itself what? Once. That's 3, 1, 3. So we have 1 over 1 times 9 over what? Over 1. Now, can we cancel vertically? No, we can't cancel again. No, we can't cancel. Then, now, we can just what? Multiply horizontally because we can't cancel again. Good. So 9 times 1 will give us what? 9. And 1 times 1 will give us what? 1. Right? And any number over 1 is the same as that number. So it will give us what? It will give us 9. Good. So easy as ABC. What it simply means is that the number of boys in the class is what? It's 9. Easy as ABCD. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. Visit our various social media platforms and you have more of our videos. Till we meet again, it's adios. I welcome you all to Solomon. My name is Joe Kambi. Yes, let's tackle this question on fractions. Yes, what do we have? Pay attention. We have two over five of pupils in class three are boys. If the total number of pupils in the class is 40, now find the number of girls in the class we are going to use two methods in tackling this question why am i saying so now looking at the question two over five of the pupils in the class are boys so we know the fraction which are boys right good and we also know that the total number of pupils in the class are what is 40. so now we can use that to calculate the actual number of boys in the class right good and when we get that, we can subtract the answer from the total number of pupils in the class, which is 40. Then we can get the number of girls in the class. I believe you got that one. Fantastic. And in the second method, this is what we are going to do. We are going to find the fraction of the pupils which are girls in the class. Then we use that fraction to multiply the total number of pupils in the class. And let's see what the results will give us. So let's tackle with the first one. Good. We have our solution. Solution simply means how you solve it, right? Good. Now, so what do we have? We have 2 over 5. That's the number of pupils who are bought. So 2 over 5 of what? Of the total number of pupils in the class, which is 40. So let's divide it into two. So we have 2 over 5 times what? 40 
which is the same as 40 over 1. Good. Now, remember, you can cancel vertically or diagonally, right? So let's do that diagonally because 5 can go into 40. So 5, 8, 40, 5, 1, 5, right? So you have 2 over 1 times 8 over 1, right? Good. Can we cancel again? No, we can't cancel vertical. Neither can we cancel diagonal. So now we can multiply the numerators and the denominators horizontally. Right, so 2 times 8, 2, 8, 16. Then 1 times 1 is 1. So 16 over 1 is the same as 16. You should know that by now. So this is the actual number of boys. So we have 16 what, boys. This is the actual number of boys in the class. But we are trying to find the number of girls, right? And since we know the total number, so the total number, the 40, minus the number of boys, right? So 40 minus 16, which will give us 20, what? 4 girls. 24. So meaning you have 24 girls. That's what we were told to look for easy as A, B, C, D, right? Let's go on a break. And when we return, we will tackle it with the second method. Welcome back. Now, we are going to use the second method in tackling this question. As I did say that with the second method, we are going to find the fraction of girls. It's easy to find. Since we know the fraction of what? Of boys. It's easy to find a fraction of girls. Then when we find a fraction of girls in the class, we multiply it with what? The total number of pupils. How will we know the fraction of what? Of girls. Now, Remember, when we commence fractions, I said a fraction is part of a whole. That is something which is one. So this, to find the fraction of girls, you have one whole number minus the fraction of boys is what? Two over five. Two over five. Now, this one whole number, in order to make it easier for us to subtract, this one whole number, we can write it as five over five so that we have a common denominator to be able to do the subtraction right good so this one whole number can be five over five i believe you got that yes if this denominator was to be four you would have written this one as four over four in order to make it easier for us to subtract if it were to be three you would have made the one whole number three over three so five over five minus two over five by now, I believe you know, 5 over 5 is the same as one whole number, you know, right? And we are doing that to make it easier for us to subtract. Mass is systematic, okay? Good. So now, let's subtract. In doing subtracting fractions with common denominators, just subtract the numerators. So 5 minus what? 2 give us what? It will be 3 over the 5. That's the denominator is 5. So we know, now we know the fraction of girls, right? Good. So we just find 3 over 5 of what? Of 40, which is the total number. So 3 over 5 times what? 40. Or 1, you say 40 over 1. Now let's do our cancellation. It could either be what? Vert diagonally or what? Vertically. So we can do it what? Diagonal. 5 will go into 40 8 times. 5 will go into itself once. That 5 times 5. Can we cancel again? No. We cannot cancel again, right? Good. So now you can multiply horizontally. What do we have here? 3, 8. 3, 8 is what? 24. 1 times 1 will give us 1. Now, any number over 1 is the same as number. So 24 over 1, 24. Voila, look at this. Look at that. 24. So we have 24 girls. Easy as easy. A, B, C, D. I believe you got it. Easy, easy, easy. Method one, method two gave us the same results. This is math for you. This brings us to the end of our lesson today. Visit our various social media platforms and enjoy our videos till we meet again. Adios. My name is Jokan and I welcome you to Solve Math. Quickly, let's move to the board and tackle this question on fractions. Good. I believe you've been following our previous editions. Amazing. Now, let's read the question. There are 48 oranges in a basket. Good. One over six of the oranges are rotten. Now, how many of the oranges are unrotten? The question is saying that in a particular basket, there are 48 oranges. 
And out of the 48 oranges, one over six of it is rotten. Rotten simply means it's gone bad, it's spot, it's damaged. Right? Good. Now, how many of the oranges are rotten? So the question wants us to look for the number of oranges that has not gone bad. Right? Good. It's easy, right? Now, in tackling this question, we are going to use two methods. Two methods. What did I say? I said two methods. Now, in the first method, since we know the fraction of oranges that is rotten, we, we multiply it with the what? The total number of oranges, right? And that will give us the actual number of oranges that is what? It's rotten. But look at the question. What is the question expecting from us? The number of oranges which are unrotten. So if you are able to find the number of oranges which are rotten, we'll just subtract that from the total number of oranges. Then we'll get the number of oranges which are rotten. Good. And in the second method, we'll look for the fraction of oranges that is unrotten. Then we multiply the fraction of the oranges that is unrotten with the total number of oranges. And that will give us the actual number of oranges which are unrotten. So quickly, let's do that. Please pay critical attention here. Good. So you have your solution. Solution simply means how you tackle the question. So as I said, in the first method, we know the number of oranges which are rotten. So multiply that word with the total number of oranges. So we're going to do 1 over 6 of 48, right? Good. And it's 1 over 6 times 48. We all know by now you should know. Of in mathematics means multiplication. 48 something alone can also be 48 over 1. We are doing that in order to make our cancellation so easy for us. I believe you get it. Good. Now, what do we have? You check whether you can cancel vertically or what? Diagonally. You should know this. So vertically, you can cancel here. But diagonally, 6 can go into 48, right? 616, 6 to 12, 6, 3, 18, 6, 4, 24, 6, 5, 30. 6 is 36. 6, 7, 42. 6, 8 is what? 48. Exactly. So 6 will go into 48 8 times and 6 will go into itself once, right? Let's check whether we can still cancel again. No. So what do we have? 1 over 1 times 8 over 1. Over 1. Now we can cancel. So we can now multiply horizontally. I believe you remember that. We only multiply horizontally, right? Good. Now, 1 times 8 is 8. Over 1 times 1 is 1, right? Good. So, 8 over 1, which is equal to what? 8. So, now, we've been able to find the number of oranges, which are what? Are rotten. Which is what? 8 oranges, right? Good. So, this is the number of oranges which are... But the question is seeking for what? The number of oranges which are rotten. So we could just subtract the 8 from the 48, the total number of oranges. So 48 minus 8, and it will be equal to, this is easy, it's equal to what? 40. So 40 what? Oranges. 40 oranges. So it means 40 oranges are unrotten in the basket. This is easy, right? Good. Now, let's go on a quick break. And when we return, we will use the second method in tackling it. Welcome back. Yes, 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 yes. We are solving fractions here. Yes, we've used the first method in solving this question, and we are going to use the second method. And what would I say about the second method? This is what we are going to do. We are going to find the fraction of our rotten oranges, and we are, if you are able to do that, we just multiply it with the total number of oranges in the basket, and that will give us the actual number of unrotten what oranges this is easy as a b c d so let's tackle it now look at what i'm going to do in our previous lesson remember i always said fraction is part of a whole when we use an orange as a demonstration so a whole part of a whole the whole is what is one 
one. So that is represented as one whole number, right? So one minus the fraction of rotten oranges, which is one over six. Good. When we are able to do this, we'll get the fraction of oranges which are rotten. Okay, good. Now, how will we solve this? This is simple subtraction of fractions. This is one whole number. And we can only do the subtraction when we have a common denominator. And that will make it easy for us. We just subtract the numerators. Okay, so one whole number can be written as 6 over 6. 6 over 6. 6 will go in self 1. 6 will go into self 1. 1 over 1, which is one whole number. Why did I write 6 over 6? Because I want a common denominator of 6 in order to make it easy for me to subtract. So 1 minus 1 over what? 6 minus 1 over 6. If this were to be 1 over 5, I would have written this as 5 over 5. If this were to be 1 over 4, I would have written this as 4 over 4 in order to have a common denominator, the same denominator, to make it easy for us to subtract. I believe you got that one. So this becomes easy for us to subtract. Since they have the common denominator, just subtract the what? The numerators. This is fraction. So 6 minus 1, which will give us what? 5 over 6. Good. Easy as ABC. So now, we have the fraction of oranges which are what? Are unrotten. So if you want the actual number of oranges which are unrotten, we'll just find 5 over 6 of the total what? Number of oranges in the basket. So we find 5 over 6 of 48, which will be 5 over 6 times 48. And 48 can be written as 48 over 1. Any number of our one is the same as that number. And you are doing this to be easy for us in cancelling, right? Good. Now, you see whether you'll be able to cancel either vertically or diagonally. So vertically is impossible, but diagonally, it is what? It is possible. 6 can go into 48. 6 will go into 48 eight times. 6 will go into itself once. That's 616. Six. So now we have 5 over 1 times 8 over 1. Can we cancel again? No, we can't cancel again. So now you can multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. That's all. So 5, 8 will give us what? 40. Over 1 times 1 will give us 1. Okay. Now 40 over 1 is equal to what? 40. So 40 oranges. 40 oranges. Voila, 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 voila. As you can see, 40 oranges here. 40 oranges. It, we got the same answer. We used method 1, which was what? 40. We used method 2, which was also 40. Isn't math beautiful? Isn't math amazing? Math, it's fantastic. It's just about following simple rules and regulations. And indeed, you will enjoy this discipline. Yes, this brings us to the end of today's lesson on solve math. My name is... George Country. Yes, I believe you've enjoyed it. Try and visit our various social media platforms for more. And on TikTok, we are Jokan underscore Jokan. Or on YouTube, we are Jokan TV or Jokan Educational channel. Subscribe to the channel, share for others to also benefit. You can also find us on Facebook. That is, you can type Solve Math or Kidzone or Jokan TV or Jokan Educational services yes you'll find more of our videos there enjoy them share for others to also benefit till we meet again for our next lesson my name is jokan adios hello my name is jokan and i welcome you to solve math let's let's move quickly to the board and tackle this question on fraction yes a very beautiful and interesting question for you please pay critical attention here Good. Now, Messi spent two over seven of her packet money on biscuit and one over seven on toffees. Now, what fraction of her packet money will be left? It's so critical to always determine or tell what the question is seeking or asking for. And what is the question seeking or asking for? What fraction of her packet money will be left? So what? The fraction of packet money that will be left. That is what the question 
is seeking for, right? Good. Now, pay critical attention here. Let's write our solution. As I always say, solution simply means how you solve it. Now, we know Messi spent two over seven on what? On biscuit. And one over seven on toffees. So to know the total fraction, you just add two over seven plus one over what? Seven. And you'll know the total fraction spent, right? So let's do that. We have two over seven plus one over seven. This is a simple fraction. You should know this, right? Since they have the same denominator, which is seven, you just have to add the what? The numerators. So two plus one will give us what? Three. So three over seven. Good. So this is the total fraction spent, right? But the question is seeking for the total fraction of the pocket money left. So now, since we know the fraction spent, it becomes easy, right? Now, remember, I said fraction is always a part of a whole. And that whole is always represented as one. Please take note of that. That whole is always represented as one. Please, it's so, so essential. That's a critical rule. So now, it's one, right? That whole is one. Minus the fraction spent, which is what? Three over seven. If you're able to do that, we'll know the fraction left, right? Good. So now, this one whole number can also be written as what? Seven over seven. Seven over seven is the same as one, right? Good. Why did I write seven over seven? Because I want to have a denominator of seven here in order to make it easy for me to do that subtraction, right? Good. So if this were to be eight, I would have written eight over eight here in order to have a common denominator of eight. If this were to be five, I would have written this as five over five. I believe you got it, right? So seven over seven minus three over what? Over seven. It becomes easy to subtract now. Seven, having a common denominator. So seven minus what? Three will give us what? Four over seven. Easy as A, B, C, D. That is all. So this is the fraction of the packet money left. Isn't it easy? Four over seven. Easy as A, B, C, D. Yes. This is solved math for you. My name is Jokan. And this brings us to the end of today's edition of Soma. I believe you've enjoyed it. I will urge you to visit our various social media platforms. On TikTok, we are Jokan underscore Jokan. Follow our page. We have more videos there. Enjoy them. Share for others to also benefit. On YouTube, we are Jokan TV or Jokan Educational channel. Subscribe to the channel. Share for the others to also benefit from the channel. Also on Facebook, you can find us on Solman. Just type Solman. Like, follow the page or Kids Zone or Jokan TV or Jokan Educational channel. Or better still, also on Jokan on Facebook. Just type Jokan on Facebook and follow the page. Yes, to meet again for our next lesson. My name is Jokan and I have love for math. Adios. I'm George Country and I welcome you to Solve Math. Today we have a very practical question on fractions to tackle. Please pay critical attention here and observe what is being done. Good. Now, let's read the question. Jokan traveled from Accra to Temali. He traveled three over eight of his journey by air, one over eight of the journey by car, and the rest by train. Now, what fraction of the journey did he travel by train? Yes. This is easy. This is very, very practical. You can travel, right? Good. And he used three over eight and as by traveling via air and one over eight traveling via car. And the rest was being done via train. Please pay critical attention here with what I'm going to say. Remember in fraction, the journey in fraction will be represented as one 
okay? One O number, okay? It's so critical and so essential. The journey is represented as one, okay? So since we know that he used three over eight by traveling by air, and uh, one over eight via car, we can sum those two, right? Good. And if we are able to do that, we will subtract it from the whole journey, which is one. And that will give us what? The what? The fraction of the journey he used by train. Okay? Good. So let's have our solution here. Solution simply means how you solve it. Good. So we can add 3 over 8 plus 1 over 8. So since the, they have the common denominator of it, we just add the numerator. Simple what? Fraction. So we have 4 over what? Over 8. Good. So now we can subtract the 4 over 8 from the whole journey, which is what? 1. And that will give us our answer. The journey he did via what? Via train. Because the question says, and the rest by train. The rest. Okay? Good. So we have one whole number minus 4 over 8. Good. Look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to write the one whole number as what? 8 over 8. You should know this by now. One whole number is the same as 8 over 8. And I'm doing that in order to have a common denominator of 8. If this were to be 7, I would have written this as 7 over 7. In order to have a common denominator to subtract, that's all. So minus 4 over 8, which will be equals 8 minus what? Minus 4 will give us 4 over 8. Easy as A, B, C, do right. Good. One may go on to do more cancellations. It's permitted. Or one may leave it as this. Good. 4 will go into Eight, how many times? Four, two, eight. And four will go into itself one. So four, one, four. So this can also be written as half one over two. Easy as A, B, C, D. And that is the result. This is the fraction that he did via train. Okay. So this is easy as A, B, C, D. I believe you got it right. Good. Please, you can visit our various social media platforms and enjoy more of these videos on TikTok. We are Jokan underscore Jokan. Follow our page and share for other students who benefit. On YouTube, we are Jokan TV or Jokan Educational Channel. Subscribe and share for other students who benefit. You can also find us on Facebook. We are Jokan TV or Jokan Educational Channel. Or Solve Math or Kid Zone or also you can and you can find this logo day share for others to also benefit till we meet again for our next lesson my name is jokan my name is jokan my name is jokan and have love for math adios <laughs>